Hello guys, welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video, I'll be covering a static section problem, specifically under part F, moment of inertia. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so in this problem, we are giving this shape and we need to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. Now, what you guys need to remember is that you could be asked to find the moment of inertia in three different ways. So we have moment of inertia about the centroidal x or y-axis. There's also moment of inertia about the x and the y-axis. And lastly, they could give you an axis and you have to find the moment of inertia about that axis. Today, we're going to focus on the centroidal x-axis. Now, if you guys want to see the same shape, but we just find the moment of inertia about the x-axis or at a given axis, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on that next. Now, to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, we have to use the parallel axis theorem, right? So if we go to the reference handbook, we are giving the equation under statics. Now, what I noticed is that a lot of times students are confused with this equation, specifically with dy and dx, right? So they give you the definition here. It's the distance between the two axes in question, but that's still not clear, right? What does that mean? What are the two axes in question, right? So I'm going to go ahead and clarify that for you guys here because that is really, really important. So when you're trying to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis or y-axis, the two axes in question are going to be the distance, right, from the centroid of the whole shape to the centroid of each shape, okay? So make sure that you write that down so and then make sure that you remember it. Now, I will clarify that more as we solve the problem and it will make more sense to you guys. Now, another thing that you guys need to remember is that the steps that we're going to use here and the two axes, axes in question only applies for the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, okay? So when you're trying to find, the, let's say, the moment of inertia about the x-axis or a given axis, the two axes in question are not going to be the distance from the centroid of the whole shape to the centroid of each shape, right? It's going to be different. And that's what we're going to cover on the next videos. Now, in the meantime, what you can do is make sure that you download our cheat sheet. And if you go to the static section, I have a table there and it clarifies the, what is dx and dy depending on what moment of inertia you're trying to find. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Before we can actually use this equation, first, we need to find the centroid, right? Because like I said, dy and dx is going to be the distance from the centroid of the whole shape, right? To the centroid of each shape, which means that we're going to have to find the centroid first, and then we can use the parallel axis theorem. Now for our problem, we are asked to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis. So that means we're going to use ix, this equation which has dy, which means we have to find the centroid above the y-axis, okay? The equation for the centroid are going to be on this page, okay? So we're going to use this equation here, okay? So with that information, why don't you guys give this problem a try? Pause the video, try it, and I will see you in a little bit. If you guys find this problem helpful please don't forget to like and subscribe it helps the channel out immensely okay guys so the first thing we are gonna do here is find the centroid above the y-axis okay so let's go ahead and split this shape into two shapes so we're gonna have this shape one and then shape two okay so let's first start with shape one so yn for shape one is just going to be half of 300 right so that's going to be 150. So remember, yn is the centroid of each shape, okay? So yn or y1 is going to be the centroid of shape 1, okay? And then we're going to multiply it by the area of shape 1, which is just, since it's just a rectangle, it is going to be b times h, which is 25 times 300, okay? So that's for shape 1. Then we're going to do plus shape 2, okay? Now, y2 it's a little bit tricky, but you just got to remember this, okay? So the centroid of shape 2 is just going to be half of 25, right? 12.5. But the problem is we're trying to find the centroid of the whole shape, right? 
So we have to reference this back to the origin, okay? Assuming that the origin is right here, okay? So, which means we're going to have to add 300 to the 12.5. So the Y2, okay, is going to be 312.5. And then we're going to multiply by the area. Again, it's a rectangle, so it's just going to be 400. And then we're going to multiply it by 25. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by the total area, okay? So we're going to have area 1, which is, we said, it's 300 times 25. And then we're going to do plus area 2, which is 400 times 25. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 242.86, and then this is going to be millimeters, okay? Now, let's quickly just go over the units. Why is it millimeters, right? So here we have YN. It's going to be just millimeters, right? For the area, we're going to have millimeters squared. Here, it's going to be the same exact thing. So we're going to have millimeters and then millimeters squared. Now, in the bottom, we're going to have millimeters squared, right, for both terms, okay? So then millimeters squared cancels, and then we're left with millimeters, okay, which is the units for the centroid. Now, moment of inertia has to have the units of millimeters to the power 4, just something to keep in mind. By the way, guys, if you struggle with statics, make sure to check out our statics course here. I actually created a course just for statics because it's a very important subject. And if you struggle with statics, you will struggle in a lot of other engineering subjects. And we recently had a student who passed his FE and he only took our statics course. So make sure to check it out. Now let's go ahead and find the moment of inertia. So this is the equation we're going to use. So first we have IXC. Okay, so for shape one, which is a rectangle. So if you guys go to the reference handbook at the end of statics, here you are giving this table and it has the equations for moment of inertia. So again, we have a rectangle, so we're gonna look at these equations here. So because we're trying to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, we're gonna use BH cubed over 12, okay? In the future or in future videos, when we'll do the moment of inertia about the x or a given x-axis, you guys will see when we actually use IX or IY, okay? We'll cover that in the future. Okay, so here we have BH cubed over 12. So B, something that also confuses students is what is B, what is H? So let me just write it down so that way it's clear. This here is going to be B, right? And this is going to be H. So H is always the height, B is going to be the width, okay? So we have BH cubed over 12, which means we're gonna have 25, right? We're gonna cube the H, okay? And then we're gonna divide it by 12. Now let's go ahead and add the area for shape one, which is going to be 25, and then we're gonna multiply it by 300, okay? And then we're gonna multiply it by dy. So if you guys remember, we said earlier, dy is going to be the distance from the centroid of the whole shape to the centroid of each shape, okay? So for shape one, we said that the centroid is 150, right? So dy1 is going to be this distance here, right? Because this here, we said that's the centroid of the whole shape. That's what we calculated earlier, okay? And then y150, that's this y1, the centroid of shape 1, okay? So this here is going to be dy1, which is going to be... So what we're going to do here is take 242.86, right? Subtract this distance here, which is 150, and that's going to give us dy1. So let's write that down. So 242.86. Then we're going to do minus 150. And don't forget to square this term. Now let's add shape 2. So again, we're going to have bh cubed over 12. So b here is going to be 400. Okay. h is 25. We're going to cube this term and then divide it by 12. Plus the area for shape 2, which is just 400 times 25 and then times dy again the same concept guys right so it's going to be the distance from the centroid of the whole shape which is 242.86 to the centroid of shape 2 now do you guys remember what we said about y2 what was it it was 300 right plus half of 12 point half of 25 which is 12.5 right it was this whole distance here that was y2 Okay, that was the centroid of shape 2. Okay, now let me show you guys what dy2 is going to be. So dy2 is going to be the distance from here to here. Okay, that's dy2. 
So what we're going to do is take 312.5, okay? So let's write that down, 312.5, and then subtract from it the 242.86, right? And then we're going to square this term. This here, right, it's going to give us the dy2. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, let me go ahead and write it down here, you guys are going to get 1.7 times 10 to the power of 8, okay? And like we said earlier, this is going to be millimeters to the power of 4. So if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be A. Now, before we end this problem, let's go ahead and quickly just check the units and make sure it does add up to millimeters to the power of 4, okay? So for the first term here, we have millimeters, right? It's just the length. And then this is going to be millimeters, but to the power of 3, okay? Which gives us millimeters to the power of 4 because of multiplication. If we look, take a look at the second term, here we have the area, which is going to be millimeters squared. And then here we're going to have millimeters. And then because the dy is squared, that means this is also going to be squared, right? And then if we multiply these terms, it's going to be millimeters to the power of 4, okay? And then same thing applies for this term and this term, and therefore we have millimeters to the power of 4. So it's very important, guys, that you start getting used to the units. Make sure when you are doing problems, make sure you, your units cancel. A lot of times you can actually catch a mistake just by checking your units, okay? It's going to really help you with your FE preparation. Now, if you guys like this video and you are currently preparing for your FE exam, make sure to check out our courses that has helped hundreds of students pass their FE. And before you go, make sure to check out this playlist here that has over 100 FE problems. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh yeah,